Bringing a pet into your home should never be an impulse decision. Cats, dogs, hamsters, bunnies, they all have their own special needs, and you need to know what you're getting into. In today's Find a Friend segment, sponsored by our friends at Rascal Animal Hospital, Dr. G herself, veterinarian Michelle Gonzalez, is here for tips on caring for cats. So welcome as always, Dr. G. Hi, thanks, Roman. Okay, you have a cute little buddy on your lap today. Who'd you bring with you? This is Calvin, and Calvin is approximately four months old, little boy. He and his brother Hobbs were rescued <laughs> by a good Samaritan, and the person that, that found them could not keep them. So then Pet Promise, which is a great foster-based organization here in Columbus, they took over them, and his brother has been adopted, so now Calvin needs a home. Calvin needs a home. Okay, so Pet Promise, how can somebody find out how to adopt? Um, they have a Facebook page, Pet Promise, and then they also have their website, PressPromise.org. And if Calvin is not particularly the pet that they're looking for, they have pictures of all their other animals that are available for adoption and information on how they can apply. You know, we talk a lot about overpopulation of cats, mm -hmm. of kittens in shelters, especially. So why is that? Is that still a big issue? It is a huge issue. And you know, cats are, there's a lot of outdoor cats. People let their cats outside. There's a lot of strays and ferals. And cats, unlike dogs, dogs go into their heat season twice a year. Cats are constantly in heat between March, period about February, March to about October. So wow. a cat can have three or four litters in one year. And those litters can be as little as two kittens kittens, it can be as big as five or six cats. So if you think about it, one cat can potentially have 24 kittens in a year. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's insane. Yeah. All right, well, let's run down some of the things you need to know if you adopt a kitten, mm -hmm. starting with their vet care. Yeah, so really important to take them to the veterinarian as soon as you get them. Even if the place that you get them from says that they've already been vaccinated, you want to establish a relationship with your veterinarian, same as you would with your pediatrician taking your kid to them. Um, you want to make sure that they're vaccinated. There are some vaccines that are considered core vaccines, which means that they're really important, like the feeling distemper, the rabies, which is required by law, and then other vaccines that are non-core vaccines vaccines like the leukemia vaccine. Also want to make sure that they are dewormed, that they get their flea prevention. Um, they can also have heartworm prevention and then microchipping. And I was ask, asking somebody about this actually recently because I didn't realize, I mean, people microchip cats just like they do dogs, Absolutely, right? and it's even more important because the cats are a little bit more likely to get out of the house if there's an open door, um, you know, chasing after another cat or a bunny or something that they see outside. And when shelters and rescues get these cats, they're supposed to scan them to see if there's a microchip before they do anything, whether they're going to put them up for adoption. And unfortunately, some of these cats in shelters get euthanized. So if they have a microchip, then they will look for who the owner is and reunite him hopefully with their owner. Always a better option. Right. All right, what about a kitten's behavior and training a kitten? Is that possible? It is possible, and, and cats are not little dogs. I try to tell people, like some people expect the same things out of a cat than out of a dog. Cats are completely different, but there's a lot of web resources on how to train your cat with treats, with clicker training, and you know, they may not be as likely to do the whole sit, stay, roll over as sure. a dog would, <laughs> but you can actually train them to do things. And we were talking about declawing. Mm -hmm. And what is your take on it? What should people consider? I personally do not like declawing. Like, I think that it's something that a lot of people do out of convenience for us more than for, for them. You know, it's like, oh, my cat is scratching. Instead of trimming their nail, I'm just gonna declaw it because it's easier. And it's not really fair to put them through all that pain just for that. But we do understand that in some cases, it must be done. So when it's done, really important to make sure that the veterinarian is using proper pain control, that they discuss all the benefits and the possible problems with it. And in our website, on the Rascal Animal Hospital website, on the client information page, there is a really good video from the AVMA that discusses what the procedure is, when it should be done, and how it should be done. And we know that Calvin is a super cute little kitty, but what about adopting an adult cat? Are there benefits to that? Absolutely. With kittens, you know, their personality is still that of a kitten. So they're playful, they run around and everything else. An adult cat already has that adult personality set. And you kind of know a little bit more what to expect. But people need to understand that how a cat behaves in one environment can be different in another environment. And it's really important when you bring a new cat into the house to give them a few days to settle. Because a cat could be really friendly and, and and playful in one house, you bring them to your house and then all of a sudden they're growly or hiding. It just takes them a little bit of time to settle in and, and get comfortable. All right, Dr. G. Calvin available through Pet Promise. Thanks as always for being with us. Thank you.